Good view. It's beautiful, isn't it? The view across the Valletta, just as the sun goes down. Yeah. Lovely. What a view. You can see out to sea as well. Yeah. A lot calmer than when we came in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Grand Harbour Marina in Malta, already one of my favourite places. It is absolutely fantastic here and for us Brits it's got other advantages because although it's in Schengen, if you want to come here and not get your passport stamped, because you're on a boat they're quite happy to just stamp your crew list, so our Schengen days aren't counting. Which is great, so we'll be staying for another couple of weeks. Bring See it on. on, I hope you like <laughs> the film. Coming up, the iconic Maltese fishing boats, a wonderful colourful tradition. Kayaking through the caves to the waters of the Blue Lagoon. And away from the crowds, the three cities where the history of Malta begins. We are anchored in a small bay opposite the city of Valletta when a tugboat containing scaffolding arrives. They are making a platform for a fireworks display and we are asked to move. We have several options, but all involve leaving Grand Harbour. So we're just holding station here before, before we can go out. But if you look, it looks like they're delivering a massive great big soup yacht on that. We're not the only ones intrigued. The wind is steadily increasing and it makes for a bumpy exit. But looking back, it may be as well that we find some calmer waters. We thought Rinella Bay should be well protected from the wind, but in fact the breeze and the swell bounce off the harbour walls and come at us from all directions. So we're planning a short sail around the corner to Marseschlok. And here, it's as if someone switched the wind off altogether. We have a large, protected anchorage, pretty much to ourselves. So we're getting used to life back at anchor. Much prefer to be at anchor, really. It's what cruising's all about. But there are some challenges. Early season at this sort of latitude, power's a problem. So, you know, we've got the extra fold out panel there. It's a 400 watt one, that, and that's charging uh, one of the EcoFlows. So I use that in the evenings for uh, the computer and things like that, just to, uh, to save the house bank a little bit, because we haven't quite got enough on the, uh, on the back arch here for this time of year. In the middle of uh, summer, we've, we've got enough. Uh, but it remains to, remains to be seen, really, what it's going to be like in the tropics because obviously there's more sun but it's it's hotter and they don't they're not as as uh, efficient in the heat so so we'll see but the thing i really want to talk about the challenge is data because you come somewhere new um, and we're in malta now we haven't got a sim card yet for for malta but what we have got and i haven't showed this before is this unit from digital yachts and uh I didn't give them a very good review, uh, the thing I did uh, at New Year about all the gear we had because one of their units broke. Well, they've redeemed themselves because they it was out of warranty, but they just replaced it, so that's really good. That was the unit that gets the, the 4G, uh, but of course we can't use that until we've got a SIM card. But the other unit that we've got from them does Wi-Fi, long range Wi-Fi, and as you saw outside, we're, we're a good well, mile really, probably three quarters of a mile a mile from the shore here, but it's picking up Wi-Fi from the shore and we, we, we found a free one. I'll put it up on, uh, on screen, this one here. So it's called uh, Wi-Fi 4 EU. So it's probably some EU thing that uh, the Malta has. And it's, I mean, it's not that fast, but it gets us online. Um, but I can, if I just hit select here, let me go through 
let's make that full screen, you'll see, look, all these different ones are different Wi-Fi's that I can see here. So, um, I mean, basically, I'm going to pick one of those. Is there's a couple of ones which are which do have encryption on them. They'll have a, a password for them, but they look like restaurants on the front here. So if we go out and have dinner at one of those restaurants, I'll make a note of the uh, of the, the code, the the password for their um, for their Wi-Fi, and that'll probably get me a, a faster connection. So so yeah, that's really good, and it's saving us at the moment because you know as I say, we've just arrived, got no SIM card, so this is the only uh, the only link we've got. So really handy. Meanwhile, we have a few hours to settle in and consider what's been growing on the hull all winter. Fancy a swim, Steve. OK, I can't put it off any longer. Should go and have a little look at what the bottom of Fair Isle is like. Should have done it really uh, before we left, but the, uh, the Bay of Couture is very cold with all the runoff from the, uh, the mountains in Montenegro, so I wimped out and didn't do it. So let's have a little look, see how much work we've got to do, how much scraping there is. The propeller hasn't done too well. I hope I can find some Velox next time we haul, as the silicon coating we applied in Turkey has been a disaster. The waterline has become a long garden, but the Seajet 33 continues to do well on the hull. All in all, better than I feared. Well, it's a lovely morning. I'm out here on my own because I've just dropped Judy off at the airport. She's going back to see her mum for her 85th birthday. Happy birthday, Jill. And I'm going to have to move from this anchorage later today because the wind's going to change and come in here. But before I do, I just thought I'd come in here to the little harbour and show you the lovely little fishing boats that Marsha Schlock is famous for. They're very colourful. These carvel wooden double-enders called Lutsu have been used for centuries and sadly they're not being built anymore. The fishermen and pleasure boaters proudly keep the ones that are left in good condition though. And there are still many in use today. Marsha Schlock has a nice relaxed feel and some lovely facades even if they are housing popular chain stores. So the wind is changing, so I'm going to sail the boat round to the other side of the island for a bit of a better anchorage. Uh, it's going to be a solo sail. Don't mind doing solo sails, but you have to be sort of triple cautious on everything. I'd sort of just triple check everything before I go, make sure everything's in place because you just haven't got the hands if something goes wrong. And uh, one of the tricky things is going to be picking up the anchor. It's got a little bit murky in the water. It's crystal clear yesterday, but I can see it's pretty much straight ahead. So I'll just drive us forward and then come back and pull that in. But as we go out, um, I did see yesterday there was some fishermen coming out here and laying little drift nets all over the place. So uh, I'll be really cautious of those. I'd normally have someone on the bow watching as we went out of a place like this, but I'll just go slowly and, and do it myself. So yeah, let's uh, pull up to the anchor get the anchor up. I suppose in a way it'd be good to have an automatic thing to do it from the helm but to be honest I like to, to see it, see what's happening up here anyway so it's not too much hassle to run back and forth and I'm not solo that much. Here we go, slightly got a little bit of sand with it. thing about the old swivel the ultra is it gets itself on there nicely i'd normally leave that on there and wash it as we go but i won't bother when i'm on my own just get going marshall's lock looks very different from the sea as you come in I mean, apart from the fish farms and things here in the distance there this is a massive port three ports because it's uh, tax-free stuff comes in through there. Apparently that was built with uh, money from the Libyans during Gaddafi's time because they were trying to get things into Libya and they could park 
two boats side by side in there and lift straight from one to another to avoid some, some sanctions. It wasn't allowed to uh, touch the ground. A lot of this cargo really could go straight from one ship to another. But yeah, big free port now. Very useful for water, I'm sure. Very enterprising. So helm on, I'll get, the, get the sails ready. I would if it was uh, windy have had these all ready to go in case I needed to sail off if the, uh, the engine had a problem or something, but actually in here it's hardly any wind and uh, it's quite shallow all the way through, so I would have just dropped the anchor straight back down if there was any problems. Get, the, get them ready now, because hopefully the wind will be behind us and have a lovely, uh, a lovely sail round. turn the engine off in hope but <laughs> there's not much there's a breath we'll do a little bit of slow sailing and chill out for a bit and see if it comes up if not it's going to be a bit of a motor but it's looking nice there's a load of big racing boats out there right in the distance hey look we're moving just So this is St Julian's Bay, a few boats in here already. Just uh, going to try and find a little spot in here to anchor. It looks like some nice white sand there. Just talking to uh, my sister's friend uh, Ian yesterday. Uh, the biggest problem with Malta is rocks apparently and, and debris that's down there. So uh, especially around Valletta. So you've got to be a little bit careful where you drop your anchor. You might not get it back again. So I'll have a good look. I'm not alone for long out here though. I've been joined by my sister Angie who lives here and youngest daughter Millie who's flown for a quick visit. The rocks are sharp. Oh wow, so we've got to go through there? No, the I'm trying to look. To see. Oh no look, there's a hole. You can, you can go yes, through. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's it. Oh wow! It's an entrance. It gets narrow for the oars. Oh. Made it. Angie knows every inch of this island and is showing us the backdoor route into the Blue Lagoon. <laughs> you didn't expect that, would you? Come out and there's a beach. Yeah. From where we anchored, you can't see the Blue Lagoon at all. But once through the cave, you find this beautiful blue swimming area. Well, apart from the jellyfish and the copious amount of visitors, even at 9am. Apparently, they don't normally let boats in the Blue Lagoon, but there are boats in there. So I'm going to carry it over and have a little row through. <laughs> there are only little jellyfish. <laughs> Angie tells me when she first came, you could have this place almost to yourself, but not anymore. It feels like um, Magaloo. Yeah, it's very touristy, isn't it? Or like Benidorm. A lot of people <laughs> just come to Malta to see the people. <laughs> There are many jellyfish and they seem to have company. He's got a little fish. You see, look, these little fish. They don't have little fish so, inside so is that, are they sheltering in there, those little fish, you think? Or are, they, or are they being eaten? Wow. Being stung. <laughs> it's a nice place to visit, but I'm glad that we anchored outside.
For me, the real beauty of Malta is its architecture, steeped in history. These lovely ancient sandstone buildings were the grand abodes of the Knights of St John, who ruled here from the 1500s to 1800. The lovely wooden balconies, however, which have become synonymous with Malta, appeared later when the island was a British protectorate from 1800 to 1964. No one seems to know why the balconies became so common, but people tend to agree that they were of Arabic descent. In more recent history, Emdina and its surroundings were a place where many children were evacuated in the Second World War. One of them was my mother, who would have been familiar with the catacombs here. Unlike my great uncle Charlie, who refused to go in the shelters back in Valletta and would instead row out into the harbour during air raids. He insisted only a direct hit by a bomb would get him. Despite the heavy bombardment here, there's still a treasure trove of architecture in Valletta. We need to spend more time here. Well, the sun's out, it's got fairly light winds at the moment, so we're just motor sailing and we're going round to, uh, to Valletta Harbour again, to the Grand Marina. We're actually uh, going to stay in the marina there for a couple of days and, uh, and just lap up a bit of Valletta. You can't really resist the opportunity to do it. We don't normally stay in, uh, in marinas in the summer, but they've given us a bit of a deal. So, so that's really good uh, and we can pick up Judy from there. So it's a good, uh, it's a good place, quite close to the airport. So I've got Millie on board, who's going to do the uh, the lines. She's sitting there like a cord spring. You yeah, ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Good. Well, we're not there yet, but yeah, we've just got around this corner, get in through the breakwaters, and yeah, really looking forward to exploring a little bit more around Valletta itself. I'll never tire of sailing into this harbour. Grand Harbour Pilots, Grand Harbour Pilots. This is sailing vessel Fair Isle. Fair Isle. Do you read them? Well, it is lunchtime. We couldn't raise Valletta Harbour Control on the way in, so just going in, following a small boat in. Doesn't seem to be anything big coming in, so no one's shouting at us, so that's good. Two of them. Grand Harbour Marina, Grand Harbour Marina, this is Yacht Fair Isle, Fair Isle, Jurida. Grand Harbour Marina, okay, copy this. Grand Harbour Marina, Grand Harbour Marina. Good afternoon Grand Harbour Marina, uh, this is Yacht Fair Isle. We've just uh, come through the, the uh, entrance to the harbour, we're uh, approaching the marina. Uh, it's possible to have someone to uh, instruct us where to go over. Yeah, standing by uh, channel 13. Bit of a lineup of super yachts. Then Grand Harbour behind. Grand Harbour is a camper and Nicholson Marina. We stayed with them in Chesme, Turkey. And they are always good. We've even got a pontoon. No slime lines, hooray. We are now in the centre of everything, but with the military reminders, we plan our first exploration in the style of Great Uncle Charlie, by paddle.
It really is a nice way to see the place, but I'm glad we're not being bombed. Valletta Harbour has everything from ancient history to industrial ports with some very modern additions. But we've come in search of this, a hidden cave Angie has told us about that runs right under the siege bell at the end of Valletta. You can get in, just, but you can't see a way out. And just when you think you've got to paddle backwards, you see the light. <laughs> and that night, fireworks. Perhaps an odd tradition here given their history, but after last week's fireworks festival that we could hear from the other side of the island, these were apparently some that were found left over and thought you'd go up, randomly, at midnight. Well, I enjoyed them. Well, it's a lovely morning here in Grand Harbour Marina, but it's a very good morning because Judy's back, which you will see by the state of the cabin, just taking out all the goodies that she's, uh, she's brought. Didn't get until three in the morning, so she's having a sleep. I'm just making a tea, turn the tea off. Um, but yeah, we've got some really good stuff. So I'll show some of this, uh, these bits and pieces in the, uh, in the videos, but one of the bits, the, one of the expensive things, it has been an expensive trip that we had to get was a new Mac because I had real problems editing the, uh, the last piece, the, uh, the technical special that I did. So there was no option. And I mean, really you've got to mortgage your house to get a new Mac these days, but we haven't got a house, so that's, that's difficult. So we have to find other ways of, uh, of doing that. Um, <laughs> but, there's some really good stuff I want to, to show you, like this. Uh, I'll do a, a little special on this. This is a waterproof drone, the Swirl Pro drone. Now, I've had one of these before. I slated this in a, in a video I did on another drone um, because I bought one about five years ago and it really wasn't up to spec. It, it was an early version. And, uh, and when, I, when I slated it, they actually wrote to me and said, well, try the new one, the new one's so much better. And I looked at reviews and people say, yeah, it really is. And yeah, it looks like it, it, looks like it could be. I mean, the design of this thing, it just looks absolutely amazing. Waterproof uh, controller here completely. Um, I mean, things like the, with the old one, you used to have to take this top off with some screws around here and then try and fiddle the battery out and it never really fitted. Now it all just comes in here, slides out the back. You've got two spare ones, you've got this, look, the best set of uh, NDs and polarizing filters I've ever seen for, for a drone. I mean, really, really impressive. Impressive looking camera, waterproof camera. It got slung underneath it, but I mean, to be, to be fair, the one on the last one looked impressive, but didn't make good pictures. So I will reserve judgment until I've actually tried that out and see, uh, see exactly what it does. And the other things I've bought with that um, are these. I really, really recommend this. With these batteries, especially drone batteries, they're really quite powerful, high energy things. And uh, in a marine environment, especially, you know, you get water on these contacts, could be a problem. So I always keep them in these bags, fireproof bags, charge them in there as well. So yeah, I mean, it's just a, a safety thing. I think it's, it's worth doing. Uh, more presents here. Look, this is a one inch uh, Insta360. I'm loving the 360s, so really, yeah, gonna look forward to using this and I'll do a little uh, video on that as well see see if that's worth having you know over and above the uh, the usual sort of 360s it should be a lot better quality uh, what else have we got these these are uh, new lights so the lights you might have seen I, right in the beginning when we did the uh, the tour of the of the boat uh, I showed the lighting that I was putting in and it goes underneath here I'll actually turn turn this one on and show you so it's these little little strip lights you just stick on. They're really cheap, you put them on there. I mean, they last a couple of years and you replace them, but as I say, they're really cheap, it's fine. But we've got ones in here as well, under there. So it sort of just lights this wall, it's really quite nice. But if you leave the portholes open, which you always do at some point and get salt water on them, they're right at the beginning, they're waterproof, but once they dry out and start to crack, that water gets in, it just blows them basically. And the last one that, that happened to, there was smoke and a little flame for a bit from it. So I wasn't happy about that. So I found these now, which are better, these rope ones. These are completely waterproof. You can dunk these in the water. Um, and the light from them is, is continuous. It's not little dots. So really nice. I mean, more expensive, but, but really nice. So a few sort of lighting things. This is another one. So I've had these before, but this is a, 
a better version, I think, of what I had before. The last one, it lasted about four years and then and then died. Um, but I find them really useful because although I've got torches all over the place, you, nine times out of 10, you pick them up and batteries are flat. You haven't charged it, whatever. This lives in that cigarette lighter the whole time. So this is being charged the whole time. And yeah, it's just a really handy little, little torch. Uh, and you can actually even flip it open and use it as a little charger for your, for your phone. So if you sort of take it with you in your pocket. So I've got a couple of those. I'll have a couple of those around the boat. They're really good. So yeah, better try and do a little bit of clearing up of all this stuff and uh, start making some videos on this, this drone. I'm looking forward to that one. I'm woken by one of the many traditional peals from the Towers of Bells around the marina. This is a country steeped in history and ceremony. In Every in new boat is blessed. In this case, by a priest sprinkling holy water. The strategic positioning of the island of Malta makes it one of the most historic in the Mediterranean. While the main city of Valletta was built by the Knights of St. John in the 16th century, where we are in the three cities, the history goes back even further to the Phoenicians. Most of the buildings and squares have been renovated quite recently but plaques on the walls remind us of days gone by. Public executions were regularly held here. The narrow streets are largely empty in this part of town, which is, for the most part, residential. It's just pretty, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even down here, there's all little derelict. Bits, isn't it? Yeah. And there are still beautiful views across the bay. In the next city, reminders of the more recent English past. A red post box and, oh my goodness, one from my youth. The mobile ice cream van. <laughs> this is a bit special, isn't it? I mean, it's not like any other boat yard you've ever seen. You boat <laughs> out on the hard here, and this is your surroundings. Very nice. Good view. Costa just as the sun goes down. Yeah. Lovely. What a lovely sight for the people on board there to be leaving Malta. Go to sleep overnight and wake up in Turkey? No idea really. Yes, it is amazing walking around here. Everywhere you go, there's beautiful architecture and a real history. And we haven't even been to Valletta yet, which yeah. is the main town. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, we're actually leaving the, uh, the harbour itself today, but we'll go around, yeah. leaving the marina, I should say. But we'll stay at the northern side of the, the harbour. There's little anchorages. Uh, we should be able to get in there so we can explore more of Valletta and then carry on through here. And we haven't been to Gozo yet. I'm really looking forward to Gozo. I've got some friends there. Yeah, we have. And we've been given some good advice as to where to go snorkeling. 
going. I'm going to try and beat my 10 seconds maximum <laughs> underwater. Yeah, I'd like, uh, I know, I'm never going to be a great free diver. I'm pretty sure about that, but it would be nice to get better at yeah. it. And it's, it's, nice. on, it's on my list. The water's warm enough yeah. now. I have had to swim without the wetsuit now, so it's, it is good. Overcast today, but we're going to get some good weather. So looking forward to that. And on the bad weather days, I can play with my toys. I've got, you can. I've got some work, work, work bits to do on the boat with stuff that you've brought still. Um, but yes, there are the nice things like that drone. I really want to get that flying. Orca are going to send, because my sister's here, we've got her address, we can send out uh, that tablet for the Orca. So I'll try yeah. that when we've got it. Uh, and try that on some passages, because we've got you know some good pa passages coming up this year, you know, yes. leading up to the, the Atlantic passage. So, so yeah, want to sort of try out all that sort of nav gear. That's going to be really good. Yeah, it is. And if we can get everything done properly before we go, I feel a lot more... A lot yeah. more confident about yeah. going across the Atlantic, which is, I'm looking forward to that as well now. Yeah, yeah, we both are. It takes a while. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much to our patrons. Thank you to our subscribers. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.